to respected delegates. Good afternoon. So the managing the cataract with small pupil. So what we need to do the for the successful management, we need to have the proper preoperative evaluation, intraoperative situation assessment, Irish tissue properties evaluation, and definitely the most important part of the surgeon skill. Why the surgeon skill is important, I'm coming uh, to the next. So first of all, the preoperative evaluation, we need to assess why my pupil is small. It is due to old age, the patient has diabetes, or use of drugs, or any pseudo-exfoliation syndrome, or any uveitis, or what. So after that, the intraoperative causes are very important, because the prolonged surgery time, the Irish touch manipulation, prolapse, or the fluid dynamics, my FACO machine parameter is also important here. So I don't do FACO with the proper parameter, and I'm complaining, oh no, people, patient's people is not reacting. It should not be done. And now the people is small, so what I need to do? So we can do the pharmacological, dial pharmacological dilatation. It could be done the preoperatively and paraoperatively with the OBDs with multiple incision at pupil or manual stretching and devices. So, but when the pupil is cut or stressed, the thing is that there is a more inflammatory mediator released and not always the pupil is returned to his normal position. The patient is complaining photophobia or there is some cosmetic blemish after the surgery. So I personally don't prefer it rather than use the device. There are lots of devices available. There are iris hook, BHEX ring, Malaysian ring, and the pupil expander. Though we are from Bangladesh, the Bangladesh we are most commonly using the Irish hook as of what we're doing after staining the capsule and fill the anterior chamber and below the iris with OVD and do four small parasynthesis at 2, 4, 8, 10 o'clock near the limbus. Hooks are inserted with, uh, for avoiding the touch of the endothelium and the capsule. And what we can also do, the keep one additional hook can be placed under the main incision to allow the ease instrument entry. Then after the IOL implantation, we can remove the hooks. So we complete the small pupil surgery with the iris hooks. And I show the four hooks insertion, and sometimes we can assess the situation and just go for one hook and complete the surgery. So every time hooks, four hooks is the uh, traditional part. If I think that I am confident enough and the, uh, the patient's eye is supporting that we can complete it with one hook, just I need the proper visibility what I am doing. And also the Malaysian ring, it has the four scrolls to fix with Irish that expands pupil from six to seven millimeter and gives us advantage not to doing the extra parasynthesis. But when I am uh, pulling it out, I need to make the question that my endothelium is not touched so I can go do a support on the hook that it will not touch the endothelium. And we can also use the Visitec I-Ring Pupil Expander. I took this video with uh, the permission of our keynote speaker, Professor Nazrul Islam. This is also a good expander device, and it helps us to do surgery. And also the BHEX ring. The BHEX ring, this is the very good and uh, cost-effective ring invented by Dr. Suvan Bhattacharya. And it is also user-friendly. So these are the device we can take help when we are doing the surgery with the small pupil. But one thing, the cataract with small pupil, are the device always required? I told the surgeon skill, the patient situation, intraoperative situation, that are the situation that we might not use the device to do the small pupil. So if we have the plan, we do the proper incision and use the proper OVDs, decrease the fluid parameters and the chop techniques in the nucleus management and using the bimanual irrigation aspiration, we have the proper plan in cataract surgery. We don't need to use the device always. And we're talking about the FACO, but in SICS, we can easily do the small pupil and even in heart cataract by, through the SICS. And here the SICS, the rexis is uh, beneath the iris and we just prolapse the lens and explant it. So when we do FACO, the rexis, we can plan for a few steps. The rexis is the most important and the surgery become easier without device if we can do the rexis. And sometimes we can make the iris guard with the Kuglen hook and see the rexis margin and we can do the rexis below the iris and complete the rexis properly. And the nucleus management, we need to have the complete hydrodissection, 
and the rotation, we always prefer the chop technique, complete division of the nucleus and emulsify at the center of the anterior chamber with stable phaco probe because I cannot see, I only see the center portion. So my phaco probe need to be stable and emulsify the nucleus and use of viscoelastics as needed are very important. For the irrigation and aspiration, I always told that bimanual irrigation aspiration is very useful. Using the irrigation can give us the visualization what we need and we can aspirate the nucleus. And in IOL implantation, I always say for the small pupil, go through in SD implantation, not wound assisted in implantation. And we always check that the my IOL is placed in the bag by uh, just pulling the iris with the ball dialer that the capsule margin is, uh, I can see the capsule margin. And we also can do the toric IOL with the small pupil, like the premium IOL, just here we do the uh, IOL implantation with the small pupil and made the proper axis and definitely of the first POD, the toric IOL axis was there. And so for the cataract management in small pupil, just we, this is the planning for the surgeon. The surgeon have to have the plan A, plan B, plan C, and any of the plan could be changed in the intraoperative situation. So that most important is the proper preoperative history and evaluation. That is the most important part. If I feel that with small people, majority of the people are, have the IFIS, so better to use the devices. Planning the surgery, and if though I am not using the devices, keep the device ready at your operation theater that if you need device at any time of your surgery, you can use it. So that is the thing. So how we can manage the small pupil. And thank you, All India Ophthalmology Society, for inviting us from Bangladesh to be here. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Ashraf. That was an excellent presentation. So, uh, delegate, if you have any question, May I ask one question, please. Uh, thank you, Dr. Ashraf. Brilliant presentation on small management. I have a question. Frequently, we get the tamsulosin patient for the benign eligible prostate. How do you manage this patient? How do how do you counsel this patient? Thank you, sir. Uh, basically, when the patient getting tamsulosin, stopping the drug doesn't help. This is the experience. So the thing is that. Uh, if the patient is continuing, better to stop it for a few days. But the thing is that we need must to counsel the patient. This yes. is very important that the surgery might need longer time than the usual time. And we might use some devices to make it visualize and properly implant the IOL site. Mm -hmm. And we also think that th there, will, there could be the IFIS there. And we need to have the operation room ready that we will manage this patient and we will manage this pupil with the, my FECO parameter, my staffs, and my instruments keeping it ready. Thank you. I think in addition what I do, I take the gonadal of the patient. If the angel is not narrow, I prescribe atropine eye drop for three, four days. And that most of the time it finds at least five to six millimeter dilated pupil. And most of the time we can do FECO if it is more than five millimeter and the cataract is not very hard. So that, that I do regularly. Thank yes. you. Thank you, sir. That's a very good idea.